Hello, I'm Bia Barros, and today I have Mary Peronian with me. She's a CISN alumni. She graduated in 2022, and now she's reporting in Bakersfield. Yes. Hey, Mary. Hi. So good to be back in my alma mater. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so good to see you. We actually graduated together. We did? Yeah. And um, what uh, have you been doing since graduation? Did you went uh, straight uh, to Bakersfield right after graduation? So How was the process? So after graduating from CSUN, it did take me some time to try to figure out what I want to do. Um, I started applying to different places, whether it's assignment editor or like some, maybe like not in front of the camera, but behind the camera jobs. And then I heard from a former classmate of mine that who is who was a reporter. And she told me, oh, you should definitely try applying here. It's a news reporter position here in Bakersfield. And I was like, OK, well, that's obviously what I wanted to do. That's what I studied for. And I was thinking about taking a break from school and then jumping into the job. Then I was like, you know, this is the closest I could be to home. Uh, I'm Armenian, so we're very family oriented. I, I always I really wanted to be close to family. And I was like, this is the closest I could be plus do what I love. Mm -hmm. um, so I packed up my life here and part-time just moved to Bakersfield. And uh, <laughs> luckily it's not that far from LA. Uh, so I do get to drive back home uh, once a week. Uh, I like my days off are Thursdays and Fridays. So on those days I come back to LA. Um, but the job is amazing. It's, it's everything that I thought it would be and more. Eyewitness News reporter Mary Peronian explains how locals are fighting for change. A few weeks ago, Eyewitness News did a story on a proposed amendment given by the Kern County Animal Services Commissioner Gary Blackburn to make spay, neuter and licensing a requirement here in Kern County. And it was all brought up on Tuesday's Board of Supervisors meeting. Definitely, I would say to anyone who wants to do news, definitely love the job. Mm -hmm. You have to look into it. You have to have a passion for it because I feel like a lot of times people want to do the job and then they regret it instantly. You really do have to love it. Um, and then that love does grow while you're in the job. Um, but I am a night side reporter. Uh, so and then our, I'm also our only weekend reporter. Uh, wow. So I do uh, Hard news, uh, breaking news, crimes, politics. And Eyewitness News reporter Mary Peronian is live from the watch party for Vince Fong. Mary, what's the, the, the vibe like out there? Well, Michael Rochelle, that's right. Like you guys mentioned, the special election is putting two of the San Joaquin Valley candidates in a position where only one can replace McCarthy's seat. But right now we are at that watch party, as you can see. But luckily on the weekends, uh, we do fun stories because that's what weekends are all about. Do you have any favorite stories that you covered during the weekends? Yes. So two weeks ago, we had this Scottish festival. Um, and if you guys ever want to watch our stories, we have all of them posted. We write our web stories. We upload our videos on our website, bakersfieldnow.com. So that's where a lot of people can go and view our web stories, our videos. So that was a really exciting story we did. And I love anything like about Scotland. So I really put my passion into that. Uh, it was really exciting. Uh, we have a lot of festivals going on in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. So we tend to cover things like that. So that was really exciting. Uh, you get to meet different people in this job. That's okay. the beautiful thing about it also. Yeah. You said that you like everything in Scotland. Do you have like any family or is just like fully Ar Armenian? I don't. I'm fully <laughs> Armenian. Uh, my grandparents were born and raised in Greece, uh, but I am fully Armenian. Uh, but I, the reason I got really excited about covering that festival is because uh, there's a show I watch called Outlander. Okay, it's about I've heard Scotland. It. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh my god, like I have to cover this, and that's the great thing about being a weekend reporter because not a lot of people work in the office so you get to choose what you want to do so that makes it even more exciting uh, so once i saw that and i told my photographer i was like we have to go we have to go cover <laughs> this we have to see like all the historical uh things they have set up so it was a really nice experience that's as i mentioned you know the beautiful thing about the job is learning about different cultures meeting different people um that's what 
connects your bond, your love to the job even more. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting all the different people and hearing their stories and so, yeah. Yeah, that is really great that you get to choose those stories. But we know that when uh, we're working with hard news during the week, it might be a little different and you might have some assignments that you might not want to cover because it's not your preference, but you have to. So how is that shift for you? Because, you know, at, at some point in the weekend, you're doing like so many heartfelt yeah. stories mm -hmm. and it's super fun. But then uh, you have to go and report yeah. something a little more serious. Definitely. I mean, so that's how it is. Uh, I am our only weekend reporter, so it's a pretty different transition going from like fun to like something serious. And that can happen like I in different days, but it can also happen on the same day. You can be covering a story um, that's a little bit more fun, but then you can have breaking news that same night. So you mm -hmm. have to mentally prepare yourself. Oh, sure, we were covering this fun thing, but like now things are getting more serious. So you have to be ready for that quick time crunch change. Uh, there's a big, um, you just have to prepare yourself, mm -hmm. you know, so. I think it's interesting you bring like that you have to prepare yourself, you have to be there mentally. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, we don't think of that. As yeah. students, we're just like, oh yeah, I want to be a journalist, I yeah. want to save the world and do all those things. But we never stop to think about how this is going to uh, affect us mentally because some yes. of the stories, some of the scenes that we're going to go, they're not going to be pretty. Exactly. How do you deal with that? It's a very good question. Um, you have to have a very strong mindset and going into the job it will feel very new for you because it's your first job you don't know what to expect you know so once you get into it you do get used to it but definitely you did mention mental health it's a very important thing so in between don't forget to think about yourself take a deep breath drink water that's also very important um, it's not always gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. And while on camera we look calm, most of the times Are we're so not, and that's okay. Um, because I feel like only only we know that. Not the viewer happen? doesn't see that. We see it. But um, there are so many stories that we have to cover where you just have to have thick skin. Mm -hmm. um, because there have been times where. I have interviewed a family for a very sad story and sometimes you just can't hide your emotions yeah you can't hide it you cry and that's okay mm -hmm. um, yeah it's really hard to not be emotional and not be biased with uh, stories that mm. you know somebody died or something happened mm -hmm. like that but what I wanted to understand and maybe all the students here at CSUN also want to understand how is a typical day in your in your day-to-day -day work? What do you do like from the moment that you get there? If you have any preparations before, can you walk us through like a day as Absolutely. a reporter? Absolutely. So I do live there by myself. I wake up in the mornings. Luckily, I start work at 2.30, so I have time to get prepared before I go into work. So the way it works for my station is you have to have three news pitches prepared and you have to pitch the stories that you want to do for the day to your boss mm -hmm. and once you send those pitches you get one of them approved and so once you get it approved that's when you start making phone calls who am i going to speak to who is going to be available at this time uh it's just like it's always good to be prepared before going to work rather than oh i'm going into work who do i have to call and it's kind of last moment for these people because either they have to leave work or they're finding out last minute that they have to do an interview which in their case it, it's it's not you know mm -hmm. it's not the best idea <laughs> yeah. so um definitely do things a little bit earlier mm -hmm. message your boss and say hey uh, I want to start things early. Can you approve my story a little bit earlier? Not when I go into work. 
So once we get into work, we hop onto a meeting, we talk about the story that uh, you know got approved, what we're gonna work on, who we're gonna talk to, what we're gonna film. And as a first uh, year news reporter, you tend to become an MMJ, multi which stands for Multimedia uh, journalist. journalist. And in that case, that means you're a one-man band. You have to film your own things, you have to edit your own things, you have to write your own script. You have to basically do the whole thing by yourself mm -hmm. and just have it air. That's it. So it's a lot of things that you have to do in a day, but um, that's how it is usually. But luckily, our station in KBAK, we have a photographer, um, so it kind of helps with the stress. Weekends, I tend to MMJ most of the times, and I think learning how to use a camera in the job is a very important way mm -hmm. of um, connecting with the field. You get to shoot things the way you want to shoot it. You have this vision in your head. This is my story. This is what I want to include in my story. So that's when you bring out your camera and you shoot the things and just... I like that more, but yeah, it's different. I, <laughs> I feel like one of the hardest parts, maybe it's just me, but we are never really taught, I guess, how to choose the B-roll, mm. you know? And it's something that can make it or break it. Like if your B-roll is not interesting, like why is the person gonna watch it? Um, how do you decide which B-roll is part of your before preparation or do you guys in the meeting someone is pitching ideas for you or you get them like last minute you're in the scene and you're like okay this is good let me go and get it yeah how does that process works for you so once we know the story that we're gonna be working on you kind of have i don't know if it's like a journalist thing but like you immediately get this vision in your head of how that story is gonna look what do you need is this a story that will require good f good mm -hmm. footage that will grab um, the viewer's attention? How will it? How are you going to make this newsworthy based off of the video that you're going to use? Um, usually, um, you it's not like oh I'm just going to record everything. So whatever you say or mention in your story, you have to put in video or so that's how I was taught you have to put in v video b-roll that matches what you say mm -hmm. so you can't be talking about like the ocean and just show like a building you know like if yeah. you're showing the ocean you have to show an ocean if you're talking about um, agriculture you have to show agriculture if you're talking about farmers you need mm -hmm. to show farmers doing their jobs and you know, that's the thing about Bakersfield. We're really big on agriculture. We're really big on oil, um, all these things. So we always have like ways of getting those videos. Yeah. And you know, your time like in a first job might be coming to an end soon. Mm -hmm. You know, you had your first two years or you know, like you had your time to get introduced to the mm -hmm. industry. What are your plans for, you know, what are, what are your next steps? So I do have seven or eight months left um, to work in Bakersfield. So I'm sort of in that uh, situation of trying to figure out what my next steps are going to be. Mm -hmm. As of right now, my plan is to stay in news. That is all I've ever wanted in life ever since I was a kid. Um, I, I knew since I was six years old, I want to be in news. Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Mary Peronian. Many high school students dream of being the first in their families to earn a degree. And so, you know, I met my goal. I became a reporter. I fulfilled my dream. That's right, and Eyewitness News will continue to monitor those results. If you head on over to our website, bakersfieldnow.com, you'll be able to find that. And I do want to stay in it as a reporter, but the thing about it is wanting to work in a place where you want, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not always the case, but in my case, I, I wanna be closer to family. So I'm gonna be trying San Diego or um, Spectrum News. So yeah, I do wanna stay as a reporter for now, so.
Let's that's, see how things that's go. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. You have any other big dreams in journalism that you haven't fulfilled so far? My goal is to come back to LA eventually because this is where my family is. Ever since I was a kid, my dream was to work in Fox 11 News. Okay. And who knows, maybe I might even give anchoring a try. So that's what I did here at Valley View. New York will declare a state of emergency to prepare for a possible rise in COVID-19 cases. The precautionary measure will take effect December 3rd. That was my number one goal. I did want to become an anchor, but if you do like to anchor, you can't immediately expect to jump into news as an anchor. You have to start off as a reporter and your, your um, market will give you the opportunity to see if you're good at anchoring and that's when you get to try out and then that's how you move up from there. Have you tried out already? I'm gonna soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't yet, but um, you know, uh, since once I started doing reporting, I, I started loving it, you that's know. Um, you're out there more. So you learn so much more about people and their stories mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier. Um, and anchoring has its beauties too, you know, so. Want to try that? Yeah, it has a full studio just for yes. you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And there is any professors or classes that helped you besides Valley View? Oh. We know that like Valley View is something really big, but any other classes or professors that might have like helped you to get where you are today? Definitely. I mean, I can't think of one class that didn't help me here in CSUN and I'm not just saying that like truly I always look back and I'm like if it wasn't for CSUN's journalism program how would I know these things? The craft of bookbinding is a lost art and something you don't hear as much of so if you ever have a book that needs to be repaired and want to grab some cheese along the way you know exactly where to come. You know, you might be a student and you're like, oh, like, does this matter? Does that matter? But once you get into the job, you truly look back and reflect like, oh, that class I took, it really helped me with this and that, you know, I took news literacy, um, uh, communications, Valley View, On Point, all these classes that helped you, um, your writing skills, your speaking mm -hmm. skills. It just all meshes once you're in the job. So I can't, I can't really point out one class. All of them, they're truly amazing. That's good. That's good. It, it's a sign that your time here was very worth yes. it for you Definitely. in your career. And uh, just so we, you know, just reached the end of our conversation, do you have any advice for uh, the students now that they want to do reporting and that they want to be in L.A. or going to Bakersfield? What is your advice for for those students? Definitely, I mean, you have to love it. You have to love the job. If you don't love it, you're not gonna enjoy it. I will promise you that. You really have to passion, you have to have a passion of it inside of you. And definitely reach out to former alumni students. They will walk you through the process regarding on any kind of questions you have. Um, and obviously I'll leave my email later. It's uh, Mary Peronian, M-A-R-Y-P-A-R-O-N-Y-A-N, one, two, three, at Gmail. You guys can feel free to reach out whenever you want um, with any questions. Yeah, there you guys have it. Um, thank you, Mary, for thank talking you. to me. That was great catching thank up. Thank you for the amazing questions and the amazing <laughs> opportunity. It's, once again, so good to be back here. Yeah, thank you.